Welcome to Rising Up, Part 1. The first thing I want to talk about, very briefly, is the nature of these videos. I'd very much like to avoid making a video simply listing fighting game terms and definitions, or listing combos. I think tutorials in that style are extremely easy to make, but don't consider the actual human learning process. What I'd really like to do instead is give you guys a simple game plan and spin you off to play until you meet someone who can beat you. I'd like if you then took note of what the person was doing that upset your game plan, and commented that on one of my Rising Up uploads so that I could then make a video detailing your options against it. Those of you subscribed to my YouTube channel should already be pretty familiar with that formula. I think addressing problems as they come is very conducive to learning, and this helps me keep my videos relevant to your needs. Of course, this means I require two things from you guys in order to help you better. One, I need you to actually play the game, and two, I need you to report back to me. Unfortunately, I think there are a lot of things you need to understand before you can even begin playing, which is why we're here now. I decided that each Rising Up video will fall into one of two mutually ongoing hand-in-hand -hand categories. The first will be fighting game theory, where I discuss more abstract concepts that I think new players should learn as general knowledge. This first video will explain some of the basic features of the game, how to control your character, and the various meters on the screen. Later videos in this category might talk about what it means to be cheap, or how to mentally deal with losing. The second category will be application, where I talk about how these overarching strategies should reflect in your game plan. My next video will be one of these, and in it, I'll go over what you should be trying to do at various ranges during a match. This is the category I'll use to discuss when and how to apply various strategies such as anti-air and cross-ups. Later videos will be structured based on player needs, but will probably include things like dealing with rushdown, dealing with heavy keep away, dealing with excessive jumps, stuff like that. I'm now under the acting assumption that you are a new player who has bought Street Fighter V and you want to learn how to play it. I'm hoping you've invested in a stick or at least a nice gamepad, and that you've already got it working with the game. As of right now, the PC version of SF5 only supports X input devices, so I'm going to release a video alongside this one on how to make your direct input controllers work with this game. I'll also go over the button layout you should probably be using in that video. Now, find training in the game's menu and select it. You'll be prompted to select a stage and character. The character you choose at the moment is inconsequential, so just pick someone who looks cool. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same character that I pick, and you can go back later and try this with any other character. Before you do anything, I encourage you to open the menu and scroll down to key display, then turn it on. Left and right control your character's walk. Straight up will jump directly upwards, sometimes called the neutral jump. The upward diagonals will have your character jump towards or away from the opponent, while the three downward directions will have your character crouch. You can also dash by double tapping left or right. Being able to dash efficiently is very useful in high level play, and it's something new players often struggle with, so I encourage you to practice dashing around the screen a bit. Fighting games have somewhat unintuitive controls at first, compared to many other genres, because unlike games with a single melee attack, every button in fighting games is dedicated to attacking the opponent. Street Fighter has six basic attacking buttons, based on whether you want to punch or kick the opponent, and how hard you want to do it. The input display will show weak attacks as blue, medium attacks as yellow, and hard attacks as red, with a symbol of a fist for a punch, and a foot for a kick. There's light punch, medium punch, and hard or heavy punch, as well as light kick, medium kick, and hard or heavy kick. In writing, they're often shortened to LP, MP, HP, LK, MK, and HK respectively. Many players know these buttons shorthand as Jab, Strong, Fierce, Short, Forward, and Roundhouse. These are much faster to say but considered somewhat dated, and the only reason I'm telling you is that many longtime players in tutorials will use these words interchangeably, so it's still a good idea to learn them. Simply hitting these buttons by themselves will give you your most basic attacks, generally referred to as normals. Your set of normals entirely changes while crouching, so every character universally has at least 6 standing and 6 crouching normals. Heavy normals tend to have the greatest range and damage, while light normals tend to come out the fastest and have the least risk associated with them. Medium normals tend to strike the balance between the power of heavies and the speed of lights, and are generally the most combo friendly. You can get a decent idea of a normal's purpose from the area at which it strikes. I'd say it's a good skill to learn to recognize your character's normals, so if you see someone else using your character well, you can take note of what normals they use and when. 
You can execute air normals by pressing buttons while jumping. Air normals are less varied in their functions, so it's mostly important to understand the ranges at which your jumping heavy normals hit, for now. All of the attacks I've mentioned so far are universal. Some characters have additional normals executed by holding particular directions alongside their attack buttons. For example, Ken can perform a unique attack by holding forward and hitting hard kick, though holding forward and hitting any other button doesn't result in a new move. Thus I have to hold right if my opponent is on the right side, and left if my opponent is to the left. In this regard it's important to understand these moves in terms of towards and away, rather than left or right. Ken's thunder kick input is towards plus hard kick. Now go to the special moves tab in the command list. Special moves require more complex inputs to perform than normals, but have various special properties. Most character strategies are fully based around how they use their special moves. Let's take Ken's Hadoken. The motion is down, then down towards, then towards, then punch. The directions all need to be executed quickly and fluidly, with the punch button immediately after the final input. Because I'm rolling a quarter circle of a motion on the stick, and because I'm rolling towards the opponent, this motion is usually called a quarter circle forward, or QCF motion. There are actually three different versions of the Hadoken based on which punch button I use. Light Punch will give me a very slow Hadoken, while Hard Punch will give me a fast one. Most special moves vary slightly based on which attacking button you hit. My next special move shows a motion that looks something like a Z. This motion is towards, down, and then diagonally down towards, followed by a button. Performing this motion then punch with Ken leads to the special move Shoryuken, an iconic move of the series. The motion is named the Shoryuken motion, or SRK motion, but it's sometimes called the Dragon Punch motion, or DP motion, as Dragon Punch is the literal translation of Shoryuken. My final special move is Tatsumaki Senpukyaku, more commonly called Hurricane Kick after its translation. This is a quarter circle away from the opponent, often called a quarter circle back or QCB, followed by kick. I'd like to show off that the hard version of the special move is quite different from the light and medium versions, as some special moves will have radically different function for their different versions. This particular move can also be performed mid-air, as the command list notes. Some special moves can be performed in the air or on the ground, and some only mid-air. Some characters have half-circle motions, going back down towards or towards down back. Written down, they're usually called half circle forward and half circle back, or HCF and HCB. These are usually reserved for throws. Again, both diagonals are required, so make sure you're fully rolling the stick or pad rather than just tapping directions. Zangief in particular has two rather unique special move commands. The first is a full circle, usually just called a 360, followed by punch. There's no way to do a full spin without jumping but there's a shortcut that makes this easier. You only need to hit 6 of the 8 directions to 360, and simply doing a half circle across the bottom will hit 5. So you do straight towards, then roll half circle back, and then up back and punch. Note that the direction you roll does not matter, so you can go back to up forward if you want. Zangief also has Lariat, performed by hitting all three punches at the same time. Note that there are macros you can assign on the controller setting that make this easier. So far, these have all been command special moves, or motion special moves. Some characters have charge special moves instead. Bison's double knee press is executed by holding back for a second or so, followed by towards then kick. Any of the three back directions work, so most players hold down and back to maintain their position. It doesn't matter how long you've been charging or what buttons you press while charging, as long as you pass the minimum charge time. While it may seem like needing to charge is a disadvantage, charge moves are simpler to use in combos, and it gets easier to incorporate charging moves into your play as you improve. The main other charge motion is charge down, then up in a button, such as Bison's head press. Because hitting up will result in a jump, it's important to hit kick here immediately during or after the up motion in order to get the head press properly. Holding down back preserves both kinds of charge, so most characters with charge moves end up holding down back quite a lot. 
Other motions for special moves are incredibly rare. Birdie, Balrog, and Ibuki have button charge special moves, also known as Zonks. You simply hold the button for the charge time, again about a second or so, then release. For the record, I think you should be able to do all of your special moves 100% consistently, so practice executing them. If the special move in the command list has a blue bar and the letters EX beside it, then you can EX it. EX special moves are performed by doing the regular special move motion, but rather than hitting a single punch or kick, you hit multiple at the same time. For example, quarter circle forward and then light and medium punch together. EX heavily enhances the properties of that special move. EX moves usually do more damage, combo more easily, come out faster, or have various other advantages compared to non-EX special moves. However, they come with a price. The blue bar at the bottom of the screen is called your critical gauge, but it's colloquially known as the super bar, the CA meter, or simply bar. You get meter for pretty much everything that happens in a match, from dealing damage, to taking damage, to using special moves. The bar is divided into three portions, and using an EX move costs one of these three. The only other use for a super bar is performing a super, or more formally a critical art. Almost every super motion is two quick quarter circles followed by a button. Supers have high damage and invincibility, and are usually very easy to use as combo enders. However, they cost the entire super bar to perform. This means every player has to choose between using EX moves and using super. If you press medium punch and medium kick at the same time, you'll get your character's B skill. B skills are unique traits that differ heavily between characters, but they all enhance each character's capacity to use their other tools. Many focus on navigating the opponent's fireballs, or patching up a major weakness of the character. Hitting hard punch and hard kick together will activate your V trigger. Triggers require your full V meter to perform, which is the red meter just above your super bar. While super can be built in a variety of ways and is maintained between rounds, V meter for the most part only builds from using your V skill and from taking damage, and it resets each round. Because of this, it's generally only available at the end of each round. V triggers are sometimes enhanced states, and sometimes special attacks, but they always drastically improve your capacity to make a comeback. I need to go into a lot of detail to explain the full effects of each V trigger. Ken's enhances his special moves. There are a few game mechanics you can't try without being attacked, so I'm going to record the dummy to attack me. To do so, I open the menu then switch to the dummy settings tab, then I shuffle the status to playback recording. In action recording settings, I'm going to record my opponent to do a crouching hard kick, and then I'm going to go to action playback and turn it on. One of the most instrumental mechanics in Street Fighter, especially for a new player, is blocking. Blocking protects you from most of your opponent's attacks. You can block high by holding straight back from the opponent, and block low by holding down and back. Most attacks can be blocked in either direction, but some attacks must be blocked low, and some must be blocked high. All crouching kicks, including this crouching hard kick I recorded, must be blocked low. Almost all jumping attacks, and some standing attacks, such as Ken's Thunder Kick, must be blocked standing. These are called overheads. Low attacks are instant, and can lead to high damage. While overhead attacks are reactable, and lead to low damage. For this reason, when trying to block, it's best to always block low, and react to overheads when you see them. It's worth noting that most special moves will still do a little damage when blocked, though this damage cannot kill you. Also, you can't block midair, which is a huge weakness of jumping. Go back to the command list and tab to the V system page. Every character has a V reversal, indicated by the message during guard. All V reversals are executed by hitting towards and all punches or all kicks while blocking. V reversals cost a single stock of your V meter, but they interrupt your opponent's attack and enable you to escape pressure. I'd say most beginners should do this frequently. 
is one additional defensive option. If you get knocked over, hitting two punches simultaneously as you land, or tapping down as you land, will result in a quick stand. Meanwhile, hitting two kicks simultaneously, or tapping back, will result in a back roll. You should basically always attempt the quick stand, as it limits the pressure your opponent can reasonably put on you. Note for later that you cannot back roll a throws knockdown, but attempting to will give you a quick stand. If you hit the opponent after they hit a button, but before their attack hits you, you'll get a counter hit. Counter hits do a little more damage and reel the opponent slightly longer, important for combos. Certain hard normals will grant crush counters rather than counter hits. I've got a lot to say about these, but I'll talk about them in a later video. If you're getting counter hit a lot, it's a big clue in that you're attacking recklessly. The final major mechanic of Street Fighter is grabbing, also known as throwing. To throw the opponent, hit light punch and light kick simultaneously. Alternatively, hit back at the same time to throw them behind you. Throws cannot be blocked, and they come out nearly instantly. The only way to defend yourself against throws is to throw the opponent at the same time, which will cause a throw break, pushing both characters apart harmlessly. Throws are balanced by their incredibly short range. I'd say at a low level it's a good idea to throw whenever the opponent is close, and attempt to get close and throw whenever the opponent is resolutely blocking. The last thing I want to talk about is stun. Just below your health bar is a smaller bar called the stun bar or the dizzy bar. The stun bar will naturally heal over time, but jumps whenever you take damage and maintains its position while you're blocking. If you eat several attacks in a very short stretch of time, you might get stunned. You can mash directions and buttons to speed your recovery from a stun, but no matter how fast you mash, you're guaranteed to have a vulnerable period when the opponent can attack you. Using a V reversal will recover some stun, so try to avoid taking too much damage and try to V reversal when things get bad. Now, if this is really your first time wriggling around in a fighting game, I have a little homework for you. Go to Gauge Settings and set every setting to Normal. Then go to Dummy Settings and set the status to CPU and the difficulty to about 6. It will probably be a little overwhelming, but this is a very harmless environment to practice. You can even try and work your way up to the higher difficulties if you want, but I'm more concerned that you get an idea of what a hectic environment a real match really is. Pull around here for a while while I work on my next video. I know this has been a lot to absorb, but this will be my only video in this series, it's just a huge info dump. Additionally, this will be the only video that benefits only beginners. I think every video after this one will have some component that isn't general knowledge, or has some mid or high level strategy to it. No question at the end of this video, and part 2 will be coming soon. Subscribe and stick around. Oh, and my older brother did the music for this video, and composes catchy and original video game music. I put a link to his site in the description. Supporting him indirectly supports me.